Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And, of course, welcome to the second episode of Building the Fleet. So today, what we're going to be doing is building a new ship completely, a much smaller ship, which is going to act as a bit of a guardian. It's going to have loads of ability to take down missiles, to take down enemy cram cannons, but that's just about it. Maybe it will have some kind of very weak weaponry to target regular enemy vehicles, Vehicles, but its main role is to defend the other vehicles of the fleet. So there's probably going to be one or two of these in total within our little grouping, but I think it's going to be a bit of fun. It's something I've never really done before. I've definitely built ships with defense in mind and, and even protecting others in mind, but never to such an extreme. So let's see how that works out. Also, I have been working on the vehicle from before, which is still nameless, our very first ship, and I am relatively happy with how the top section is now looking. We can also now access several of the different compartments by foot, although you do end up literally falling into here and, and having to jump out, it is still technically accessible even with little pretend ladders. So I quite like that, although still not exactly done, as you can tell by this part being completely open to the elements. I'm still not sure how I want to cap this bit off or this bit off, and if I want to add one of the, what are you called? The strategic antennas. I said that weirdly, but either way, I do kind of want to add one of these to this, but maybe that'll go on a larger vehicle, because this is definitely not going to be the largest vehicle of the fleet. Honestly, I consider it medium to small. But today, we're building tiny! Splish! A little while in, and we have our steam boilers and we have our lovely batteries. This way, we have 576,000 energy, which is translating to 23,000 engine power, which honestly isn't that much when it comes to lasers. Lasers can be a bit greedy, to say the least. Now, I will say, this is not the optimal way to do this. Just as a bit of a disclaimer, if you want to make a good laser craft, I wouldn't recommend this. I would recommend fuel engines, maybe a boiler backup, but definitely using an electrical backup with these batteries, but allowing the regular engines to feed into the batteries, so then they can both be used at once when the enemy is attacking, because lasers do cause a giant spike in power. That's what I would recommend. Why am I not doing that? Because, literally, I don't want to. That is the only reason. There is no excuse past that. I just want to see if this sort of idea works. Having it charge up and then release all of its power at once. And then charge up again between volleys. That's all I really want to do. Now, before we start building the proper shape of the ship, I do want to test out just what type of laser system we're going to use. Now, most likely, I'm going to have four separate systems, and that way it's all lovely and redundant. One in each corner, probably going down into the deck a little bit. Then that way it'll be very difficult to fully turn off the defense system. And since that's the whole point of this ship, I think that is probably the best idea. At least, I'm hoping it's the best idea. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So for now, let's just build this outside. Now, I will say, it's been a while since I've tried to build a laser efficiently, so... Expect some, uh, let's be generous, expect some curious choices. Let's go with that, curious choices. Doesn't that sound so much better than stupid mistakes? I think it does. And since, I, and since I'm talking about myself, and stammering to say myself, I think that's the nice way of doing these things. Okay, so, let's put all those down. Just going to put down some regular cavities. I said regular, thank you, one, two, three, four, five, um... Yeah, let's go with about that for now. I will be tweaking this afterwards, don't worry. This is just a, I wonder if this will even work kind of thing. The three meter pumps, that way we can get a load of power into these things, then the regular pumps, and then repeat that on the underside as well. Now, when it comes to the laser munition defense, I can't remember what AP, that is armor penetration value, and what damage is meant to be good. I vaguely recall someone telling me 10 armor piercing for shells in the past. But you know what? It could be completely wrong. It could be. They don't even need them at all. And we will find out very, very soon. But for now, we'll just go off of the premise of 10 armor piercing. Currently, 180 pulse damage with one arm penetration. So let's go ahead and add some of the frequency doublers. And let's check now. 
We are, we are now on 11.1, and because that's too perfect, we're going to mess it up. Uh, would it be best to add some of the destabilizers? Ooh, I could add some of the storage cavities. Now, these can't be fed with the pumps, but they can... Sorry, they can't be fed directly via the pumps. The pumps from the others can feed into them, but they do store a lot of power for the laser. That's why I use them, which I think does fit the theme quite well, so... Even this will be charging quite heavily. There we go. As you can see on the right hand side, we're using a lot of engine power to feed this. 3,000 pulse damage right now. Wow, I did not realize those things hold so much power. I don't really use these very often. Now I'm suddenly starting to think maybe I should. Maybe I should. Anyway. Back to the point at hand. So, we want the laser munition defense. Now, we don't want too many of these because the damage is split among them. At least, I think it's split in a way that's pretty um, fair. So, each of them gets a portion of the damage. At least, I think that's how it works. Can you tell? It's been a while since I've done this. Hence why I keep saying, I think, maybe, and perhaps. Now, I just put down the AI so we can quickly put down the munition warners. Again, this isn't the permanent position of these or anything, and I will go back and change this in a little while. I'll do some reading and stuff to make sure I'm actually doing some of this correctly. So, the age-old test at the moment is to summon in the Doom Drone. Which is you. Hello, Doom Drone. There we are, firing away. Well, definitely worked. <laughs> Not a single missile got close. However, our power reserve was not particularly happy with that, and we're currently burning material at 9.9 .9 per second overall. That's a lot. But yeah, that is working perfectly, honestly. That didn't get anywhere near us. A lot of power, though. Even more than I expected. So, if I'm going to have four of these, I would definitely need to scale it back. Let's see what the damage gets to as the fight goes on. Uh, can you please fire once more? Thank you, my lovely matriarch. That's still really high. Okay, it does get down to about 500 at the end there, because of course we don't have enough engine power to supply all of these pumps to fill this fast enough, essentially. We're just not filling the energy back faster than we're using it. Hmm. Nice. So, I've added more of the laser anti-missile defences, because at the start, that amount of damage is way higher, I think, than needed for that many anti-missile defence blocks. So, splitting them a little bit more seems to be more effective. But then it gets worse, because they get weaker later on, but still. And that's pretty much perfect. You know when you're just feeling cruel? Four Doom Drones! Currently using no Q switches. You are kidding me. You don't get to live through that. Okay, um, I have nothing else to say there because I was so sure that I was going to die. So, problems with this, the only problem I can see is its range is really short, but my god, it just stops them. Aha, it finally got through because the fragments killed it. So, 
no Q Switch version. Say goodbye to anything coming close. Well, at least that. Okay, uh, next up then we need to test out cram cams because that was absolutely ridiculous. Also, repair mode. A lot of people did point out about the repair mode in the previous video, and I just don't like it because it has crashed my game so many times in the past. So I do tend to shy away from it a little bit, but it does seem more stable now, so I will try to use this. That way I don't always have to mess around with repair bots, but still, what the hell, you're not even designed well. Okay, even terrible d designs can win when you have a lot of batteries. Actually, to be fair, that's not even that many batteries. And we're currently only on 2,000 volume, but we have everything we need by the looks of things for the laser system, just the advanced cannon and overall armor and design. Then basic movement. So I guess the idea of these then, these would be a little bit ahead of our ships, so... One of our ships here, then these next to it are a little bit ahead. So then when the enemy shells are coming over, enemy missiles or what have you, this thing just kind of sits there and destroys them before they get close. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? This doesn't seem as long range or as effective long range than the Q-Switch version. But my god, the fact it just stopped them like that was so fun to watch. Okay, so this will kill our ship because it is using torpedoes and I don't have any way of tracking them. But outside of that, can you defend against the cram cannons and the missiles? There's a lot of them. Have fun. Yes to the cram. And... You completely nullified our main ship. Oh wait, you didn't. There's torpedoes. <laughs> that was a bit vindictive, wasn't it? Uh, stop. Pause. Moments before death, the little ship realized his mistake. It was a calculated move, but boy, he was bad at math. Okay, this is probably the final test I'm going to do. If this works, I'm happy. At the moment, I've done a little bit of mental math here. And honestly, having just shy of 10 materials burnt per second is not that bad. Which means this vehicle is burning 600 materials per minute. Most battles last no more than 5 at most, and that's with this actually surviving the entire battle, which isn't exactly likely. Well, depending on how much armor we actually add to this thing. So, I'm actually okay with that. I was tempted to scale it back, but right now I've done a few tweaks to the laser system and I've added Q-switches because they're better at long range. Can we defend against the crossbones? Ignoring the AI guns. The problem is these are advanced cannons, which are naturally very good against what we've set up. I just want to see, I just want to see missiles and crams being destroyed. Well, yep, yeah, that is definitely destroying missiles and crams. Okay, this is more of a cluster, though. That got closer. Ooh, we took some damage from the fragments. That did get a lot closer, but even so, it was still removed. I'm actually thinking about the advanced cannon being an offensive weapon, not a defensive weapon on this. So at least it can contribute to the battle in some minor way. Just maybe a 250mm kinetic advanced cannon. Really simple. Crap against shields, good against most other stuff. You see, normally I say crud in these videos, not crap, and that sounds really weird. Battery power is going down though because these steam engines definitely can't supply it forever so I'm thinking eventually it will lose. But saying that, the closer the shell gets, the better these are and that seems to be doing just fine. Yep, I am completely okay with that. I wonder how powerful this laser would be if it was made into an offensive laser. Probably quite nasty honestly. Okay, enough testing, as much fun as it is just to watch this work. Let's start building the final design. So what I'm actually thinking of is having two kind of circles here at the front and lighting them up all science-y like, with like blues and yellows and stuff like that. And then having it taper off to the back with the body only partially connected to it. And then quite a large keel down here to protect everything down there. The advanced cannon has plenty of space, so the AI and the advanced cannon have loads of space we can put them, and then ammo I think I'll add to the keel itself, so it's quite well protected. 
Since it's an advanced cannon, we probably won't need all that much in terms of ammo, since we can load it before the battle. Similar to the Pharaoh tanks, which definitely can't supply their own ammo during a fight, but they can last long enough because they just hold the ammo beforehand. Hmm. Don't quite know. Let's see how it turns out. I'll be right back once I've figured out a basic design. Bit of a change of plan, I've now made this way forward and this way backwards. So to do this, all you need to do is load the vehicle, let's go and load, there we go, and then press the rotate design 90 degrees clockwise button in the top right, you press that twice, and then you flip to your ship. I do get that question a lot, is there a way to do that, and that's pretty much it. So, what we're going to do still is something similar, I still want these two sides to be quite distinct, but I think I'm going to focus on this craft always pointing at the enemy so unlike the other one uh, the last vehicle we built this isn't going to ever broadside at least it'll try not to that way we can just focus on the defense on the front quite heavily so lots of layers of metal will likely be added here before we start work on the design as my voice slowly dies yep that i definitely like this will definitely have a different style to the original craft, and this wouldn't be considered a starter fleet vehicle. But that's the thing, although this is building the fleet, I am not going to restrict myself to one specific area of the campaign. For instance, the last vehicle could quite easily be built at the start. In fact, the Malal's Will, which was actually more expensive, was built before we'd even seen the first boss. So, the last craft would definitely fit into the starter category. This one is already at 43,000 resources, making it around about half of the last craft, and we are not done yet. It's also going to hopefully look a little bit more futuristic with less wooden armor, although I probably will, still will use some, because I like me wooden armor, what can I say? I'm a simple person who likes his armor simple. Simply put. So, this will definitely look the most boring, having it just flat like this, and kind of end on a flat note as well, but it will be a lot easier to defend easily. I will try and make it look a little bit better underneath, but right now, since it's going to be in the water, we can't really see it anyway, I would rather this thing survive a couple of shots over have a nice transition between the two sides, if that makes sense, which I certainly hope it does. I do strive to occasionally make sense. And let's go with this. Now, people have asked me a lot to do time lapses. The problem is, what I find from the depths, if you're trying to do, uh, well, trying to gather footage for a time lapse, you've got to be very careful about how much your mouse moves. And I am terrible for doing this, just looking around constantly. I did actually get some footage in the previous video. I was intending to use as a time lapse, but it was, it made me motion sick to watch. It, but it wasn't enough usable to actually do anything with. Okay, that's a really annoying height actually to deal with here, so remove you, put you in this four. A three and a two maybe, and then we cross section it, we'll add some extra armor here, which will also likely have some of the propulsion. Yeah, that makes sense. Just making sure that the laser systems don't get knocked out by a very light attack. Now, here's the question. Do I want to use shields? The answer is yes. But do I have the resources to? Because they will take up a lot of battery power. Well, a lot of engine power. So they're only going to be on when the munition system isn't working. Well, at least hasn't been working for a while and has actually drained the batteries. So I don't know if that's an option. Once again, the problem with how I've done this is it's definitely not a perfectly designed build it's just a bit of fun really just testing out the idea but that is definitely something which could be improved upon by just having fuel engines and such starting to really look like a craft which is being devoured by another craft and i'm okay with that i'm tempted to call this thing symbiote or something similar to that it's a symbiotic relationship it's keeping its host alive because it needs to move around and survive doesn't really care so much about the host, but it's helpful. But maybe I'm adding a few too many animalistic tendencies to what is essentially a lump of metal. But it's my little pet lump of metal, yes you are. Who's a parasitic little robot, yes you are. Pros and cons time. 
Pro. The amount of armor on this thing is actually ridiculously impressive. Even on the inside, this is going to take an absolute beating to kill. It also has a lot of redundancy in terms of most of its internal systems. Cons. We are about to hit maximum volume. We haven't even added movement yet. So currently it's just a living defense system and nothing else. Also, I still haven't armed up this section because this is where I was going to add the... Well, actually, I don't really know what I'm going to add up here, honestly. I was going to say the bridge, but I don't really want a bridge on this thing. I kind of like it looking a bit more automated. So whatever armor to hide this. And after that, we probably will be at maximum, so we can add movement, but then I'll have to remake some of it in order to add at least a weapon. Or do I? Do I really need to add a weapon to this thing, or can it just be for the, for the protection of our glorious empire? In fact, this would act really well as a base for something, so if we had a mech torso on top or something similar to that... Really not sure. I may have to scale back on the armor. This front section here is completely just for looks. So what we could do is remove both of these spikes and then connect them up here at the front. This would be a lot cheaper and a lot less volume. Same with the back. That's pretty much nothing. We could easily break off both of these spikes. And honestly, that might look better. Yeah, I think it would look better. So that's what I'm going to do. That way we can save up enough volume to at least get the armor and the movement sorted. Then we can start to consider, do I want a small advanced cannon? Do I want a small missile system? Do I want this to be offensive in the slightest? Okay, nice and simple, going to add a really basic PID system since we are running out of volume underneath and on top, so thrusters and propellers. This way, this thing will just not sink. It should be almost able to float by itself. This is before adding any of this. Because it does have air pumps, I will then also add some aerofoils, which can also work with the PID. Basically, I just don't want this thing to ever die. It's going to be... Very distracting for the enemy. Hydrofoils installed along with the rest of the PID systems, and this is slow, sluggish, and incredibly stable. To kill this, the hydrofoils, the air pumps, and all of the PID would need to be removed, at least in terms of actually stop this thing from moving. So that's good at least. Going to add the detection so we can definitely take down missiles and cram, and then I'm deciding on if I'm going to actually weaponize this thing. It definitely looks like it needs a little bit more. And honestly, having a bit of a feature point here with a weapon would be pretty nice. Otherwise, it looks a bit too much like a base. It really is screaming to become a mech base or something, which I could do in the future. Perhaps that's what this is going to end up as. It can be used on its own or to carry something much, much more evil. And with that shadowy glitch, I think it's about time I called the episode. So right now, what do we have? We have a fully functioning base vehicle. It can easily deflect missiles, cram cannons, and all that kind of stuff, and probably low-end advanced cannons as well. The problem is, we have pretty much run out of volume for my original design, and I'm not happy with how it looks. Some people may disagree, but I am... Giving it a 6 out of 10. It looks different, but I don't like it all that much. So I don't know if I'm going to keep it and simply add a weapon, or if I'm going to redesign the entire top section. But I do also want to move the engine lower down. Currently, I feel like the steam boilers are a little bit too exposed, and we do have a lot of space down here we can work with. We are currently 5,100 volume, and we cost 61,000. So not that expensive, but certainly not cheap either. Obviously, I also need to redo this. I was messing around with different numbers of the munition systems, and it seems like a little bit more than this is perfect, but right now is obviously very good. That's still incredibly far away, and yeah, it's all being removed. We haven't taken any damage except for from the fragments against two of these for ages now. In fact, by the looks of things, this one got damaged at some point. How about you? No, no, you're both fine. Perhaps, I don't know what happened there. Either way, though, yeah, it's still... Ooh, that was interesting. It didn't detect that last missile. Oh. We haven't done the munition warners properly on the front. Well, at least I found out now. When it actually focuses on the correct spot, it's absolutely fine. So with that, I'm afraid I really am all out of time for today's video. In the next video, we're going to finish this off. So... I'm going to leave it as it is. We're probably going to add a weapon. 
probably, though I'm not sure. Tell me what you want to see from this in the comments, and do you like this type of design? More of a, not even sci-fi, more of a, I don't even know how to describe it, non-realistic, non- normal ship shape. Do you like this? Do you not? Tell me. Well, either way, if you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And now, I get my thumbnail. Minor correction, it isn't that the ammunition warners were off, it's because the energy went so low. Currently, we're at half engine power. This is testing out sustained attack, which this is not built for. And honestly, I think he's still doing okay. Actually, why is the battery level not moving at all? That's odd. Is that glitched? Off, oh, stop, stop firing. Yeah, the battery level isn't moving. Unless it's reached a sort of equilibrium. The engine power still being used, apparently. No, that is... No, it did reach! Okay, so, yeah, it was just sustained. Never mind, it wasn't bugged. It did take a long time to get there, but essentially, we were only getting half of the engine power into the lasers, so that was the lasers at half strength. Correction noted. Now to the actual end screen thing. Bye-bye.